Okay, so we're getting started again. Our map, I'm able to go to locations. I'm able to go to locations. My map is able to zoom in. I put in Texas, it zooms into Texas. Right, yes, everybody? Okay, cool. Um, next step, next step in our app, we'll add an MK user location button or tracker button so that I could go back to my, the user's location at any point in my app, right? Because right now, I'm not on the user's location. I'm somewhere in Texas, but I want to be able to click a button and go back to the user's location at any point in my app. So let's go ahead and create in our view controller here. Let's call it user tracking button, MK user tracking button. So we'll add this button so that when the user clicks on it, it takes them back to their location at any point in our app, right? So user tracking button, let's configure it. No, we'll actually configure it later. So we just declared it here. Uh, we'll configure it here. Configure, configure tracking button. At any point, I could click on it and go to the user's location. So user tracking button is an MK user tracking button. We'll give it a frame. We'll give it a frame and a position. CG rect. Our CG rect takes in four arguments, an X and a Y. We'll say 20 for the X and 20 for the Y. And we'll make the width, say, 40 by 40. OK. So that's our tracking button. Does it matter if you choose um, the float or the double? No. Not really. Uh, so use the tracking button dot map view is map view. Very similar to our refresh control, right? We set our tracking button map view to the map view. Yes, it's an actual button. It's like an arrow. It looks like an arrow. What's that? Yes, the, we set up the frame programmatically, as opposed to auto layout. Uh -huh. This is not auto layout. This is known as frame-based layout, where we do in the layout with frames. So what this button when I click on the button, I could go back to my location. For example, if I'm here on the map, uh -huh. I want to go back to my location with that blue dot. Uh -huh. I click on the button. It takes me back to that location. Cool? You need to give it some frame and size. You could put it in your bar button as well. You could put it anywhere you want, but basically I just overlay it on the map. Okay. okay. Uh, it might be in the way of our text field, but we could fix that. Uh, let's run it now and see if it renders. Oh, I need to do one more thing. It's not going to show. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, we need to add it to the map view sub view. So map view dot add sub view user tracking button and now it's going to show make sure you say map view that adds a view you need to add it to some sub view right it's a view like any view so i need to add it to some sub view everybody with me mm -hmm. right so when i say add sub view at this point we should see it above our text field the what? How did I get to the bottom? Yeah. How did I get to the bottom? Uh, ours is 20-20, so if your text field happens to be 20, it's going to overlap, overlap. Yeah. Do we see our tracking button? Scroll up. Kristen, do you see your button? Yeah. Okay. 
Shift either or. If you, you could shift your frame up if it's too high or too low. You could make it zero, zero. You could put it below. You could put it at the bottom left. We could put it anywhere, right? Bottom right, sorry. Yes, you could put it bottom right, anywhere you want. Um, very good. So at this point, if we go to some location, I'll go to Texas here, and I click on my tracking button, it takes me back to my location. Do we see that? Cool? And again, I'm just showing you the UI. You could add that UI anywhere you want. You could add it in your nav bar. You could add it anywhere you like. But I want to expose you to what Map, MapKit has. <laughs> Did you add it to the sub view? Does it show? Does the tracker button show? Yes. How do I get my location to be my current location or where we are now? Uh, you could use. Um, yeah, you could use basically in the struct. If you look at the struct we have in the call location session. Just grab the pursuit coordinates and put it in custom location in the debug area of the simulator. I know, but one of the functions gave us coordinates as well, but it's to give it a location, right? Uh, yeah. But for now, just use the pursuit. Over the what? We'll do the campus uh, later. Okay. Yeah, we'll come back to that, okay? All right, I wanna show us one more thing here before we move on. Actually, let's see if I go back to, uh, can I do LIC New York, will that work? Yay, it works, great. Okay, um, I want us to add our annotations that we had in the struct, right? We have the struct we had on Friday. Let's go back to adding annotations here basically a review from what we did on Friday, but I wanna show us how to add an image or changing the colors of our annota annotations, and then we'll end lecture there. But basically, let's make not annotations here. So I have a private function, I'll call it make annotations. And we'll say for location in location dot get locations. And here we have annotations is of type MK point annotation. And we'll return like we did on Friday annotations. And we'll return MK point annotation here. Great. And now we're going through this for loop. We'll say let annotation. We're creating annotations now of type MK point annotation. We need to give it a title. The title will be the locations title. We need to give it a coordinate. Without a coordinate, your, note, your annotations is useless, pretty much. Uh, so coordinate here, location, that coordinate. And lastly, we will add it to our annotations by appending it to the array. Okay.
Cool. <clears throat> Let's create a function called load map. the only thing we've done so far. Uh, make sure that your MK point annotation is MK point annotation. You return in an array of MK point annotations. And lastly, we'll say map view dot add annotations. Not annotation, be careful there. It's plural and annotations. What's that? The more I see the word, I start to question if it's spelled. Oh. <laughs> All right. So we'll call our load function in here. Uh, add annotations to map view. And we'll just call load view, load map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here I run the app, and if I zoom in here, we should start seeing our annotations, correct? Yes? Uh, let's make sure Central Park, I have Central Park, and Brooklyn Museum is somewhere, that's fine. Okay, I have my annotations, I could click on them. Great, great, great. Okay, uh, let's take it one step further. When I add my annotations, I want it to show the annotations, like try its best to zoom in and show all the annotations it can, okay? On Friday, we did it in line, but today I'll show us a delegate method on our map view. So let us set our map views delegate to ourselves. So set map view delegate to this view controller and here we'll say map view dot delegate equals self okay and then let's go create our extension like Christian says here uh, map view map mk map view delegate. Some of the methods we'll use today will say did select. We'll use this one. Just put a print statement for now. view dot annotation that title was selected. We'll also take a look at view for annotation. This one just comment it out for now. And we'll also look at did load did finish loading, did finish loading map, right? That's the one we'll implement first. So when my map finish loads, I want to show the, all the annotations. We'll make a simple variable to let us know when new annotations got added because I don't want to always, if I zoom out of my map, I don't want to have that effect of my map trying to zoom back to the annotations, which could happen. So to avoid that from happening, I'll go create a simple state variable. 
I will call this is showing new annotations, set it to false. It's showing new annotations, I set it to false, and only when I add new annotations, I'll change it over to true, when I add new annotations, right? So, going down. Yeah, that's the only thing we added so far. Cool, it's showing new annotations, we set it to false, and where we say make new annotations, we'll say, um, is showing set that to true and there's one other thing I want to add annotations equal to annotations we'll create a variable as well to hold our annotations If you're done, just go create a private var, uh, call it annotations, oh, okay. and set it to an empty array of mk point annotation. Because back in our did finish loading map, we don't have our annotations there unless we have some state variable or some variable holding our annotations. Okay. Awesome. So, what's that? Uh, this guy? Wait, is it equal to or is it equal to? Equal to. But it's an array? Yeah, it's an array. Okay, let's go create that right above, right here. So, private var. MK point annotation. Great. And then we'll go back to our did finish loading map. What's the difference between a uh, point annotation and a point annotation? Uh, what's the difference between a point annotation and a regular annotation? Yeah, um, As in? I suppose you make national and put an MK annotation. MK annotation is the parent class. Oh. Right? Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, going back to our did finish loading here, I'll simply say if is showing annotations, is showing new annotations, then on my map view, I wanna show annotations, annotations, and false. And here, is showing annotations equal to false. Because where the animation bugs are gonna happen if you say true here. Like it will zoom in, it would be very glitchy trying to zoom in with the map. If we set it to true, it would be very glitchy zooming in. So that's why we change it to false here. All right, so at this point, let's run the app. Right, so we, we get a better representation of what's going on. It doesn't show us the entire globe. It zooms into our annotations. Everybody with me? Yes? Okay, cool. So that's one of our protocols we saw today. The next one we'll see is did select. I think we should probably go to did select first. Because with did select, there's things that you probably want to do. Like, like search, by uh, search, yeah, search by location. Should we do, do we have the image assets? Yeah, let's, let's do the view for first and then we'll do the did select after. So our view for function basically returns us an annotation view 
And here you could customize the view that you returned, right? Very similar to our table view cell for row or our collection view cell for item. Yes? Yes, we set it to false after we show the annotations. Because if you don't do that, anytime you zoom out, it will automatically zoom back and show the annotations. Uh -huh. OK, so here, let's set that up. Again, it's very similar to DQ reusable cells. So for here, we'll first check to see, uh, let's see, annotation is mk point annotation else return we just want to make sure it's not the, the user's current location okay. if it's not the user's current location we'll dq here to an annotation view we'll use our map view dot dq the queue. We need a reuse identifier. I'll create some identifier here. I'll call it uh, annotation view. Okay, and here we'll just use our identifier. Great. Okay, so next, if our annotation view, view, if it's nil, we'll create a new one. Else, if it's not nil, we'll simply say annotation view that annotation equals to the annotation that was passed in. And lastly, we return the annotation view here. Over here, we want to use a marker annotation, so we'll cast this to mk marker. MK marker. MK marker annotation view. Marker annotation view is what we see here. This is a newer type of view that we have in iOS. Before that, we had the pin, right? But here we have a more modern MK marker view. So we cast it to an MK marker view, which has more properties than the pin had, right? And we'll see the properties here. So good, good, good. Annotation view, annotation view. Oh, this should be annotation. All right. So we'll create a new annotation view. We said MK marker annotation view is annotation, and we have our identifier. This is the reason why we created this constant here, because we don't want to hard code those literals everywhere, because we're using it two places already. One place here second place here, so it's easier to just create a constant. So now we have our annotation view. We'll say annotation view can show call out, set to true. Other things we could do, we could say we have our, everybody has the assets, right, in their folder? Okay. Next thing I could say here, I could say annotation view that glyph image equal to UI image <coughs> named and we have a duck image, right? Yeah. All right, cool. Before we do anything else, let's just make sure this one renders and then we'll change the rest of the values. Uh, why is the what? That's the type of image that expects. So run, and let's see if this renders correctly. And then we'll add more customization on it. So here, we have our duck image showing. Do we have our duck image showing? Do we see it? That's from our assets, right? Yes? Greg, were you able to see yours? I'm interpreting, sir. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Oscar? Okay. Can we all see the code? All the code? Let me take this out of the way. Here. There's no code here. T 
Ta -da -ta -ta. Yeah. won't give you an image to this location. Uh, it just, um, the only thing over here, the, the blue dot, it doesn't give us an image for the blue dot. Right, but my blue dot is technically where... Um, oh, okay, I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. So change it, change the location. So I can see all of them? Yeah. All right, all the things we could do while we're here, Let's make the glyph image change the color. So annotation view dot glyph tint color uh, system yellow. Let me zoom this phone bigger. Right. So here. It takes your image, it makes a glyph out of the image, and then you could put tints on the image, right? Everybody? Cool. What else can we do? We could change the marker color. So, uh, marker, tint color, uh, system blue. Oh, anything that says system color name is supported by dark mode. If I just say dot yellow, it's not dark mode ready. So really try to use system colors. It's almost like a hard-coded color in a sense. Um, cool? Okay. Uh, one thing we could do if you want to do, but we'll just test it here. Uh, there's a glyph text. That's going to override the image. I bet you see it too, right? If you just want to have text instead. Cool? So here we're able to customize the annotation view. Very good. text always have priority over the image? Let's see. If we put the image at the bottom, I think the image is going to override. Let's see. Let's see. Good question. Let's see. Real time. What happens? If I put my text first and my image after, text still overrides. Cool, very good question. Awesome. So I'll just comment this out. We like our duck image, right? That's what we like here. <laughs> right? Cool. So we could do like customizations for our group projects and do things, make things. Uh, okay, lastly, I want to show us did select, right? Because some of the questions I'll get asked is, hey, how do I get a location here? Because there's no index at or index path. Everybody with me? Right? So here, when I click on the location, we want to see what the location is. Um, the Foursquare API, does it have an ID? Does it have an ID, the Foursquare API? Like an ID for the location? OK. Cool. Good. Uh, okay, so here, annotation title was selected. Okay, very good. Awesome. I want to get a location here. How am I going to get a location? I will say results equal to location dot get location filter. Filter by title. Annotation. Filter by title. One second. Kind of going away from ourselves there. Let's first get the annotation. Title, card, let uh, annotation.
annotation equal to view dot annotation else t -t 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 return. So we have our annotation, great. Now we could say annotation dot title. And we'll say guard here and location. And we'll wrap that entire thing in a parents and say that first, else return. And now we can say print location. Location that title was selected. We could take out our print statement. First time, that name is uh, first time this name is seen. It's the same uh, it's just the first. There should just be one. Um, assuming we assuming here that our titles are unique. So if our titles are unique, we should only have one result. Does that make sense? The first result in the array. Filter? Yeah. It returns an array. Yeah. I only want to get one object out of that array. Yeah. I have to say what object I want. Okay. Right? So in that case, it should be an array of one object. Right. So I'm just accessing that object. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Uh, OK, so let's test this. Again, whatever makes your Foursquare um, thing unique, you could go with that. Where am I? So if I click on this duck here, it tells me location pursuit was selected. If I go to Central Park and I click on it, it tells me location Central Park was selected. Yes? Correct? Yeah. Okay. You able to uh, verify? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, okay, so that gives us even more tools of going and do our group project. We have all the tools we need at that point. Um, I'll just show us one more thing and then we'll end here. Um, some people are asking about visual effects or visual blur effects or having some sort of like blur effect on the image, whatever. Um, so let's see what that looks like. And we'll do that by first going to our storyboard. We'll go to our storyboard. We'll add in a view controller. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I was wondering why I had my whole Okay, so we have a view controller. Great, great, great. I click on my view controller. I change the background color from white or system background color to clear. I change it to clear. Okay? Next, I go to my object library. I search for visual effect. Right? Clear. I change the background color to clear. Yeah. We're not doing that. We're just doing the basic visual effect. Um, OK. The only thing we did so far, we have a view controller. I want to make it clear so that when I overlay my visual um, effect, it shows somewhat the, like the map in the back, right? That's why I'm making it clear here, okay? So let's go ahead and t -t -t make it clear again. I click on it. Yeah, uh, where am I? Clear, we go to the object library. We say visual effect. We drag in visual effect with blur, not vibrancy here. And I wanna make it take up the entire view. So zero all around. Or standard all around. And at, yeah, exactly. And at minimum, we'll have an image view here just to show some sort of image view. Uh, 
image view constraints, we'll say zero, 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 and we'll set the equal heights, and we'll make it 40%. Okay. Now we need a class to manage that. We need a class to manage it. So let's go ahead and create a class. Command N, Cocoa Touch class. And we'll simply call this one location detail controller. Location detail controller. Our location detail controller has an outlet, which is a weak variable, type image view, or type UI image view. Aha, we'll get some more practice with using dependency injection with storyboards here. We'll create an initializer. We will also call this required initializer. Our initializer takes in two variables here, an S coder and a location. So we need a location variable out here. Then we say self dot location equal to location and we call super init with coder. Remember fully encapsulated at this point. Good? Good? I want to go back because people are still typing. Guilty. How are we doing? Good? Good? Okay. Good? Can we move on? So that init with coder, we'll be using it to inject our, our view controller with what it needs. Our view controller needs a location. We'll use that init coder with location to in inject our view controller with that via storyboard. And again, this is new to iOS 13. It's great. At that point, I could encapsulate my view controller entirely by making my location private. Because before that, I would have to make my location public. 
and expose that. Okay, uh, before we move on, let's just finish our VD load here. So image view dot image equal to image. Well, not image. Uh, UI image named location dot image name. Cool? Cool? Continue, continue on? Uh, yeah, yeah, we have four assets there, but we have three locations and we have three assets for each one. Uh, back in our view controller, back in our did select, we have a print statement here. We do not need that anymore. <laughs> so what I want to do now, I want to basically get my storyboard instance. So guard, let's call it detail VC equal to storyboard. I'm using storyboard here since I have a main storyboard. If I didn't have a main storyboard, I would have to use the name of that storyboard. Everybody with me? Everybody with me? So if you want to create a storyboard in your group project, you're free to do so. And I'm not seeing enough of those. Like, please, even if you're working in a group project, feel free to work on a, use a storyboard. Because at the end of the day, we have to be able to use both storyboard and programmable UI, right? So don't just like lean one way or the other. Try to encompass both of them. Force yourself to do it. If not, um, make it like a team norm, like we should have a storyboard file in our code. Uh, so here we say storyboard.instantiate. Instantiate view controller with coder here. Identifier and coder, that's what we're looking for. So identifier will be the name, which we did not give of the storyboard file. And this coder here, I'm gonna take out all that code here and simply just put coder. And we need an else statement. I'll say fiddle error. And here could not downcast to location detail controller. And we need to update our storyboard file with the ID. And here we simply return location detail controller with the initializer we just created. So that's the initializer we just created. Xcode is now able to see it, even if it's a storyboard, right? It sees it, it has a coder. We put a coder because we need access to the coder as well here. So it needs a coder here. And location, we have a location, we pass the location. At that point, our app is ready to be presented. We could simply say, pre we, give it a, um, we haven't given it an ID yet, we will do so. So here we could simply say, present detail, VC, true, no completion, And lastly, let's go update our location ID. Because right now, our app will crash because we have no ID here, right? So let's go over to our storyboard. We'll come back here. But let's go over to our storyboard. Stop typing for now. Let's go back to the storyboard. And we have a bun bunch of stuff to do, actually. We haven't even connected the UI. So open up your assistant editor. Open up your assistant editor. Change the class name here for our view controller. Change the class name to location detail. And copy location detail, paste it into our storyboard ID. Yes? So two things. One, we change the class name to location detail controller. Two, storyboard ID is now location detail controller. Keep them the same. Avoid bugs there. Okay. And we need to connect our image view to our image view. 
That's all we need to do. Oh, you run it already? You're running away from me, huh? All right, I see you. Okay, so run the app. Can I go back to, yes. Let's go back. Where were we? We were in the map view did select, yes? Yeah, right here. This just looks different. Okay, so now we're saturating the view controller, but we're giving it a PA, which is the width that it has. Yes, this is new in iOS 13. That's syntax. And that's what we did like a couple weeks ago when I introduced it. Um, but basically, it uses the initializer that we created. So we say instantiate view controller with ID, the ID that we have. Again? So it's additional library, so it's just like a How are we doing? Type in? Still type in? Okay, let's run the app and see what we have here. Okay, so if I click on Pursuit here, it shows me the image, right? So that works, and it presents it. So what we did here, we have a visual effect. It's light, we could change it to dark, we could change it with whatever <coughs> defaults we want. And now I'm able to see some of my uh, map in the back. Do we see that? Um, yes, what's that? The visual blur. It's a view that just part of iOS. Uh, other things we could do, we could make it darker. So if I go to storyboard here and I click on it, there's some options here. What is it? Uh, if we see blur style, do we see blur style? If you click on the visual effect view and go to attributes inspector. Click on the view, go to Attributes Inspector, right? So you could, you could play around with those values, right? You could do dark and see what a dark looks like. You could run that. There's dark light, extra light. If I click on one of those, right? So that's dark. It depends on what you're going for, okay? Other things we could do, light, all the things we could do here, we could also customize the presentation of it. So detail view, that modal presentation style. I could do over full screen, over current context. Here, if I change the modal presentation style to full screen, let's see what happens here. 
If I click on one of my annotations, it will take up the full screen, right? Other things I could do, let's see, over current context. Over current context, that's better. Over current context is a better visual UI than full screen. Um, other things I could do while I'm here, I could say detail view controller dot modal transition, where am I? Modal transition style. Instead of um, sliding the view, I could make it cross resolve, like a fade. I could say cross resolve here. So those are the two things you could change before you actually present the view. The presentation style and the transition style. So if I click on my duck again, right, transition is cross resolve. It just appears with like a small fade. All the things you could do here, there's all the options. There's a flip horizontal, there's a partial curl. I click on pursuit again and I get a crash. What is this? Uh, application tried to present modally to, okay. Not supported without a view controller. Partial curl, uh, flip horizontal. Okay. Uh, the cross dissolve. I think cross dissolve is pretty good. No, you can't get out of it, right? You just put an X. Before iOS 13, right now we could slide, when we have a motor presentation, we could slide down, correct? But before iOS 13, this is what you got by default. It always took up the full screen. So we needed to add like a dismiss button or anything like that. If you go to that view, you just need to add an, a dismiss button and then dismiss the view, okay? At this point, we have enough tools to go ahead and continue working on our group project over the next few days. Um, we've gone through uh, V4 annotation, we've gone through did select um, annotation, we've gone through um, did update, did finish loading map, right? At this point, we have enough tools there to have keep going. After we put it for, um, if we change it to cross dissolve, right, how do we go back? You just have to put a dismiss button. I have to put a dismiss button. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have this view? Like, it takes the entire screen, correct? Yeah. You just have to put like a dismiss button. Because right now you can't slide down. No. It takes the entire screen. Okay. Yeah. So I'll put those branches for the dismiss? Uh, you put a dismiss button somewhere in your UI, and when you click on it, it dismisses the view. Oh, and that's what we have that is over cross Yes, exactly, exactly. So it depends on the effect you're going after. Like if you want to do... Yeah, you pop over then it just come up like a slide. Ex exactly. Like if you don't use any transition presentation style here, it will cross dissolve. Actually, let's see. It will cross dissolve here, and I could slide and I could slide down. Right? It's up to what you are you guys going for. Cool. All right. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, will, we see, will we see the blur effect go if um, we have navigation controller on the flush Ah, uh, no, 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 no. It has to be presented on the on the current context. Yeah. Uh, yes. Detail VC. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, this guy. Okay, that's it. All right. Any questions about map view collocation? Cool. Great. All right, so we'll stop here.